Hey guys, welcome to Urology Biology. On this episode, I have received the cheapest automatic watch that I found on Timu. Now this is the Oxtin coming in at $32. It is a fully automatic watch, stainless steel. I'm basically gonna strip this watch down completely to its bare bones, run it through the cleaning machine, rebuild it, regulate it, oil it, all of that, and I wanna see if it's gonna run better than it did when I received it. Now this is the third in the series of these type of watches that I've done. We've done the Amazon watch, we've done the AliExpress, and of course now we're gonna do the Timu. I basically tested this on the timographer when I received the watch, as you can see there. The amplitude's not amazing, but it's not that bad. Beat error is a bit high, and of course the rate is also a little bit high. And I think I've got something that I can work with. Now I am expecting with all of these type of watches that it's gonna be really dry inside with no oil. And of course, that's where yours truly comes in and makes it super fresh by giving it some oil special treatment. Because seriously guys, when it comes to your watches, they gotta be oiled. It's like your car, man, I've mentioned it many times before. They need to be lubricated so that they can run nice and smooth. So like the other two watches that I've worked on within this series, the case back was exactly the same. It looks like it's a screw case, but it's not, it's a snapback. So you will need a case knife to pry it open. It's pretty straightforward and it comes off pretty easily. Also, I have removed the rotor from the automatic mechanism as well, because it's always advised to do that before you remove it from the case. Once that the movement has been removed from the case, I'm gonna obviously tackle the hands. Now, I always put a piece of plastic over the dial in order to protect it, and then using hand levers or a Presto tool, I can just easily remove those hands. And these hands actually look quite nice. They're cheap, obviously, but they do look nice and shiny, and the loom on it's not too bad either. Now to remove the dial, you have got two screws on each side and this one popped off quick, as you can see. Didn't expect it to drop out like that, but it is what it is. So I'm putting the hands and the dial as well into a dial case. These are little boxes that you can get. They're quite affordable and I highly recommend them because when your dial is away from the movement, you wanna keep it nice and safe so it's not gonna get scratched or anything like that. So I'm gonna put that aside, keep it nice and safe until we're gonna need it at the end of the service. So once I've got the movement into a movement holder, the first thing that I always recommend is guys, remove your balance. It's the most delicate part of the watch and it's also the most easiest part that you can damage. And it's also the thing which will give you the biggest headache trying to even bother adjusting that hairspring. And if you're just learning out in regards to watchmaking, I really wouldn't advise tackling something like that straight away because it can be a bit daunting. And even now for me, I don't like doing it. I'll be honest, it can test my patience sometimes. Seriously can. I've also removed any wind from the watch as well in order so that it doesn't spring away. That basically means I've removed all of the tension from the mainspring, got all of that kinetic energy out of there. And now I can take away the pallet uh, cock and also the pallet forks. Quick inspection, and so far things are actually looking not too bad. So the next thing that I'm gonna do is remove the train of wheels bridge, which by the looks of things is actually holding the automatic works as well. And this is a massive bridge, and it can be a little bit daunting for some, because as you can see, once it's removed, you have a lot of wheels underneath that it's holding. Five in total, as well as the mainspring, of course, as well. And I'm kind of curious how it's going to be putting that back because that's a lot of pivots to align under one large bridge. Now underneath this bridge, you have got the hour wheel. It has a reverse threaded screw, of course. As you can see, I am turning this the opposite way to undo it because it's reverse threaded. And it's important that you take note of that so that you don't screw it the opposite way and break it off. There is also a friction spring underneath there as well and that will also need to be removed. Now back onto the movement, I am basically removing the crown wheel, I'm also removing the escape wheel and the rest of the train of wheels. You can also see the reverse uh, wheel for the automatics and also another driving wheel for the automatics connecting to the mainspring. There is a lot going on on this watch and especially for the amount of money that it costs. Remember, this is a $32 watch. I'm not that familiar with this movement. They label it as the SH2. Maybe you guys can let me know exactly more about it in the comments. So please feel free to drop a comment and let me know.
Now, on my previous two videos, the AliExpress one and the Amazon one, I received a lot of comments from people thanking me for these videos because they said that they'd purchased these watches and were using my videos as a referencing point to basically pull the watches apart and rebuild them. And I think that is an absolutely brilliant idea. These are not expensive watches. And if you want to get into watchmaking as a hobby, it's a good idea to use watches like these, which are brand new. They don't cost a lot of money because realistically, you are probably going to break something along the way. It just happens. It's like anything that you want to get into. You've got to crawl before you walk. And I have broken many things along my journey as well, as you will too. So please, by all means, I will leave a link in the description to this watch. Uh, if you want to purchase it, it's not anything to do with myself. I don't make any money on it or anything like that. It's not an affiliation link or anything like that. By all means, purchase it and use my video as a referencing point. And I wish you the best of luck. So I've turned the movement over and now we're going to tackle on the dial side. Now, there is a bridge plate which is holding the calendar mechanisms in place and it's held in with these three screws. Now, as you noticed, I am using a piece of pegwood to hold that down so I can lift it up gently because I know there will be a spring underneath and the last thing you want is for that to fly across the room. Quick observation in regards to where everything lives and then we can go ahead and start to dismantle it. Now, there's a few various little plates that I'm removing and as you can see, I'm just making an observation of each part and I'm obviously making note of where everything lives. It's a good understanding of trying to learn how things work. The date lever being removed. I've also removed the spring from it, which was something that I was worried about flying across the room. And of course, last but not least, I can remove the date disc. Of course, the hour wheel. And then I can remove the minute wheel as well, if I can get hold of it. Intermediate wheels. Also the date changing wheels. And now I can remove the cannon pinion. Cannon pinion is quite easy to remove as long as you remove it with the Presto tools. I do not advise doing it with tweezers as some people do. Get yourself a set of Presto tools. They will last you a lifetime and it is the best way to remove a cannon pinion. Now, when you're removing parts, one thing that I would strongly advise is, I mean, with this, it's a little bit different because obviously it's a video. If you don't have a video, take photographs as you go. Guys, I cannot stress it enough. You will not 100% remember where everything lives. And I get an abundance of emails from people saying, oh, I'm not too sure where this part lives on this watch that I've put back together. Can you help me out? And I always come back with the same thing. Take photographs as you go. We live in an age now where everybody has a camera because pretty much everybody has a phone and pretty much every phone has got a camera. It doesn't have to be the best camera in the world. It's just for taking constant observational pictures as you go. So every time you take away three or four parts, take a picture of the movement. When you're building this back up, you will have the perfect reference point of where everything lives. The other thing that you're going to find is the more that you do it, the more that you're going to find that you don't need as many photographs because you're just going to become more accustomed and more in tune about where everything lives on the watch. So I flipped the movement back over and there is one more bridge that I need to remove for this center wheel held in with the two screws. And again, for a very cheap watch like this, I'm really surprised to see that that's jeweled as well. I've removed the center wheel from the movement and also, I'm really surprised as well to see that that is jeweled also. So guys, I do have a Patreon and also HP members. And I just want to give a big thank you to you guys as usual. So all of your names are up on the screen. Thank you as always, guys. I really do appreciate you. I've also peg cleaned the movement by pegging the jewels, as we call it. It's basically removing any old oil from the watch. With this, because there's really not much oil at all, it didn't take a lot of effort, but I showed it to you guys how it's done anyway. I'm also removing the automatic mainspring from the barrel and also removing the arbor, which is a little bit tricky to get out. And there you see it fly away. And then I can remove the mainspring. And this is something that you do not see often. A completely immaculate barrel. I mean, you could eat your dinner off of that barrel. It was not normal how clean it was. It should never look that clean. 
But of course, from a cleaning perspective, it's going to make things a hell of a lot easier. But that just shows that with these type of watches, they simply just do not oil them. So if you've made it this far into the video, I commend you guys. That's mad fresh of you and I am super appreciated. And now of course we can get on with the full rebuild of this watch and see if we can get it running better than it did when I got it out of the box. As you just saw, I have applied what they call a braking grease to the barrel wall of the mainspring. Now that is really, really important that it has that because an automatic mainspring means that you can just wind the watch indefinitely. It will not get to a point like a hand wound mainspring where it will lock in place. It will just keep winding and winding and winding if you keep winding it. But you need to apply a grease so that it moves slower along the barrel wall. I'm also adding some 1300 to the arbor uh, where the barrel lid is going to go on and I'm simply just going to click that in place. Using a special little tool that you can buy, you can pick these up super cheap on eBay for like three or four bucks. And it is the perfect way to close your barrel in an equal fashion. The other thing that I'm also going to do is completely oil the capstones for these Inca block style settings. You simply just pry them apart, one on each side, and then with a little piece of Rodico or putty, you can lift out the jewel from the um, cock. It's in two parts. You want to remove the top part. You want to clean off any old oil, as I'm demonstrating. And then what I do is I put it into a small bottle of Fixer Drop, which adds a thin layer of lubrication on top. And what that means is, is that when I oil it, means that the oil is not going to run away all over the place. I also use a 9010 oil which you get from Mobius and you just need to add a little bit just into the center before I put the rest of the capstone together. Simply just click it into place and what you're looking for underneath is to find a little bubble of oil for where your balance staff is going to live when you put it back onto the watch. Which is exactly how it looks. You also repeat the process on the other side as well. So on the dial side, this is on the bottom side. I'm only going to show it in regards to one way because the principle is identical on each side. So make sure that you do both sides. Don't scrimp and just do one side. No, sir, that's not fresh. That's not how it should be done. Do two sides. Don't be lazy. I will find out. Once you fit everything in place, just clean off any dust from pegwood or anything that you've touched it with, with some Rodico. And the other thing that I like to do is I like to give it a nice blow test to see how freely that balance is swinging and how quickly it takes to stop. And you want it to last a nice amount of time. As you can see, that balance is very, very free, which means the lubrication is very nice. And I'm very, very happy with the results that I see. Of course, once you've finished, completely now remove the balance from the movement and again put this away nice and safe until you're going to need it at the end of the service because again it goes back to what i said at the beginning you got to protect that hairspring that hairspring is super delicate it's super touchy super temperamental and you need to really look after it so i'm also adding a little bit of 1300 here onto the jewel where the center wheel is going to go i'm also adding a little bit of 1300 to the top of it as well for where the bridge is going to go on top, as you can see. And again, I am really impressed that we have a lot of jewels on this watch and proper jewels, I might add, not these thin little plastic things like I've seen on the Amazon watch and the AliExpress one. So I'm holding up confident about this. So for the posts, I'm also using 1300 as well. 1300 is like a medium oil. A lot of people use D5 as well, which in my opinion, it's pretty much the same as 1300. And then I've added the click spring in place and also the click. Just testing it to see if it engaged correctly. As you can see, we've got some friction, which is what we want to see. And now I can add in the mainspring barrel complete. Little 1300 onto the top of the arbor as well for where the ratchet wheel is going to live. And that just simply just sits on top in place. And I'm just popping in this reversing wheel for the automatic works. And this is where things are getting a little bit tricky. Because like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, there's a lot of wheels that are living under one bridge. And I would have liked to have seen two bridges. Like traditionally, you get a barrel bridge and you get a train of wheels bridge. With this, 
it is just one humongous bridge, as you can see. And popping everything in place means that all of those pivots have got to be aligned correctly before you screw it down. And that can take a little bit of trial and error. My best advice in regards to doing things like this is take your time. Use your microscope to make sure that you can see that your pivots are aligned. If you don't have a microscope, make sure at least you're using a loop so that you can see through it correctly because you do need some kind of magnification in order to see what you're doing. So on the underneath of the bridge, I am putting a little bit of 1300 for where that crown wheel is going to go. As I mentioned before, it's a reverse threaded one. So as you can see, I'm screwing it on the opposite way as how it's traditionally done. And then I'm also applying this friction spring into the center. Carefully holding it down with a piece of pegwood as well so that it doesn't slip out of alignment. And then I can gently offer the massive train of wheels bridge to the movement. Now my advice is just use a piece of pegwood to hold it in place and gently nudge all of your wheels into the correct pivots. You usually find that you'll get one or two in straight away and then the other ones you're going to have to just manipulate them as you go. Once you're happy and you've tested everything, screw everything down lightly. But as you're screwing things down, just give it a little test as well to make sure that your wheels are still in alignment. So the next thing that you want to do is, or what I do is, oil your jewels. Now I'm using a combination of 9010, which is a very fine oil, and 1300. 9010 is basically on the trained wheel and 1300 is going to be used on the center wheel. I'm also using 1300 on the automatic works, this driving wheel and also that reversing wheel as well. Now on the flip side of the movement, I'm going to just install the cannon pinion. So I'm adding in a grease onto the post for where the cannon pinion is going to live. It needs to be lubricated, so it's important that you do do that before you pop your cannon pinion back on. Cannon pinions are just friction fit at the, end of the, at the end of the day, so you just simply just using your tweezers will offer it to the watch and push it down accordingly. Now I can build up the rest of the keyless works. So the winding pinion and the sliding pinion on this watch seem to be one piece, which I was a little bit confused at at first, but as you can see, it's just how it is on this watch. Usually on watches, they are two separate pieces. This is the first time that I've actually seen it as one complete piece. Also put it in the setting lever spring and I've just added the setting lever screw as well. Also added some grease to the arm, which is important. Anything that is metal on metal and it's going to be rubbing against itself, it is important that you use a proper grease. So how was everybody's New Year's Eve? I hope everybody got super loose. And had a seriously good time, friends, family, all things like that. Man, in the Netherlands, it's not normal New Year's Eve, something I've still never got used to. And for any Dutch people that are listening right about now, the whole situation with the fireworks, it's not normal. I've still not got used to it. The Dutch spend an obscene amount of money on fireworks for New Year's Eve. And it's kind of funny as well, because every year you read the same thing in the news, that different councils are talking about banning fireworks. And then they even come out and say that certain fireworks are banned. But still, it's still absolutely crazy, man. It starts building up around two weeks before the end of the year with boom, boom, boom. And then on New Year's Eve, it is like absolute war zone for hours and hours. You will not get sleep. It's not possible because outside it sounds like World War Three. But it is what it is. It's only one night at the end of the year. And of course, yeah, it's good that people celebrate and have a really good time. I'm actually looking forward to 2024. I'm curious about what it's going to bring. I'm curious what it's going to bring for me and the channel. Uh, I've got a few ideas what I want to do moving forward. I'm actually happy as well that I've recorded this video for this year. And I've actually also recorded another video as well for a really nice watch, which will come out after this video. I need to do the editing on that completely as well. Uh, but that's a very nice vintage piece. And... Yesterday, I went to uh, a local watch expo, the first one of the year that was in the Netherlands. So anybody that I bumped into at the Rikertik in Houten near Utrecht, uh, it was good to see you. And I was really happy that I went because I picked up a couple of nice things. I picked up a really, really nice project watch for the channel. I specifically got it for the channel. It's a very, very expensive brand, very expensive brand. 
Uh, I'm not going to say which uh, model it is, so you guys are just going to have to wait and see. But uh, I'm really looking forward to uh, doing a restoration on that watch. It's not a huge watch, it's a small watch, but like I said, it's a... It's what they call like a tier one brand. It's a, it's an expensive brand. And uh, yeah, I'm definitely looking forward to, to working on it because I've never worked on one before. Uh, and I'm curious how it's going to go, most definitely. So moving on with this watch, we are getting close to the end. I've installed the keyless works, all of the calendar mechanisms, the date disc has been on, and I've also fitted the bridge plate which is on top also added in the little spring as well for the date changing mechanism and i'm just testing the quick date and it works so i can't say fairer than that the next thing that i need to do now and again close to the end is fit the pallet forks and of course the balance as well so for the pallet forks i use some fixer drop treatment i also clean the pivots afterwards as well to remove any of the fixer drop and then i can install it into the watch Carefully just aligning the pivot and then I can add the cock on which is held down with the one screw. Now once that's screwed in place I will give the watch some wind as I need to have tension in the watch in order to move the pallets in order to oil the exit stone. Now just a little bit of oil just on the stone as you can see and then what I will do is I will just manipulate the pallet forks backwards and forwards a few times in order to lubricate every single tooth or teeth, sorry, of the escape wheel. It's important that it does have this lubrication. Like I said, you will repeat this a few times in order to lubricate every single teeth. Now the complete balance has been fit, as you can see, and the watch is running. Maybe it was running before, but the question is, is it going to run better than it did? Next, we will reinstall this big dial onto the watch. So carefully just offering it to the movement, I'm just gonna put that down into place. And then like I mentioned at the beginning as well, you have got two screws on each side of the watch, which will just nip against the dial feet and hold that nice and snug in place. Quick check of the, sorry, quick check of the date, just to make sure that it's snapping over as it should. And then of course we can install the hands. So they always go in the traditional order. You will add on the hour hand first. Make sure that your date is aligned to 12 o'clock because you want that to snap over at midnight. And that is simply just friction fit onto the movement. And you can see that the date snaps over at 12 o'clock. So the next one that I'm going to add is the minute hand. Principle is exactly the same. All friction fit. Line it up at 12 o'clock. And of course that's friction fit as well. The principle is exactly the same for the seconds hand sweeper. So you simply just repeat the process for all three. It's pretty straightforward. So a quick blow of the inside of the case, make sure that you get any dust out of there and then I can offer the case to the movement. Flip it over. And then I can just rest it on this pad. Also adding some grease as well onto the winding stem before I push that back into the watch for the final time. And then we've got this a uh, movement holder. Yeah, on most cheap watches I'm not expecting anything special and this is just like a thick plastic movement holder which will just keep everything snugly in place. There's no screws holding it in, it's all friction fit. And then I can just push the winding stem in. I'm also adding a little bit of oil as well for where the rotor's going to go. And that's just held in with the one screw. But I hope you guys have found this video informative. Please leave me a comment if you feel fit. And also, please let me know if you're going to buy it as well, because it would be interesting to see how you guys get on. So, of course, the timographer results. What did we get? Now, this is pre-regulation, bear in mind, and we have got a nice, beefy amplitude up in the 320s. I'm more than happy with what I'm seeing. I will, of course, regulate the watch after 24 hours, but we're coming in at plus 10 with an amplitude of over 320 on a watch of this price. I am very, very happy, and you should be too if you get the same results. I'm also using my Bergeon uh, crystal press tool to reinstall the case back. So there we have it, the Oxtin Automatic $32 Timu watch. 
Guys, I really hope that you found this video informative and I really hope that you use it on your watchmaking journey as well. If you're bored and you've got nothing else to do, there's two more watch restoration videos on the screen right now. So enjoy. And as always, guys, till next time.